Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Payne Spear, and I'm the admissions demonstrator here at the Culinary Institute. I first began my education at CIA in January of 2017 and recently graduated in January of 2020 from my bachelor's in business management, where I also specialized in baking and pastry and the Italian cuisine concentration. So for our demonstration, we're gonna teach you all not just about how to do the cleaning method with our food, but also how to convert recipes, because this is actually going to be the first demo for our series of fundamental baking techniques. So as we get started today, we're gonna to be talking about converting recipes from volume to weight. So one really important factor is you need to consider that whenever you're usually scaling recipes, it's going to be um, whenever you're doing it for weight and why it's important. So we're gonna to go to the next slide, please. So it is very important because whenever you are scaling your recipes, you want to make sure that you have them as accurate as possible. So right now you're probably scaling with cups, teaspoons, measuring spoons, things like that. Right now we want to move into grams. And by doing that with our scale, it happens in fundamentals. A lot of times with your recipes, you're going to be transitioning in the beginning from doing this volume to where you're going to be going by weight instead. So as we go, it's more accurate. And for example, if we have one cup of sugar, it's going to be 198 grams. And if we have the same measuring cup of flour, it's going to be 125 grams. So just because that volume is the same doesn't necessarily mean that the weight itself is the same. And this is really important because, like I said, you're going to get a more accurate product whenever you go through. Next slide, please. So for our demonstration, we are going to be covering it with a cookie recipe. And it's nice because cookies are actually the first thing that you make in fundamentals. And I know it seems really simple in the end, but also it really showcases the mindset that you go through as a student. So with the cookies, we are going to look at it and you can see all of our measurements. We've got cups, we've got teaspoons, we've got measuring spoons, we even have sticks of butter. And this is a lot of different types of measuring that's going into it. It gets a little bit more complicated and it's also time consuming. So we wanna make it as um, easy and as efficient as possible. So next slide, please. And especially if we're converting to where we're doing mass production. So for example, um, we're looking to make money. So even at Four Seasons where I did my externship, we were not making a single batch of 12 cookies. We were making bats and bats of cookies in a mixer that could fit meat in it. So let's say we convert this recipe to be 50 times. Do you really want to scale out 137 and a half cups of flour? And then also we've got teaspoons, we've got uh, sticks of butter. So we want to make this as easy as possible. Also because we're gonna be measuring with larger uh, products and we're gonna be measuring with larger amounts of products as well. So next slide, please. These are common baking conversions. The first beginning of whenever you're converting a recipe from weight to volume is you need to know the weight of these cups of flour, cups of granulated sugar. And we get all of this from what's called the book of yields. You'll get this whenever you go into your culinary math class where you're learning about converting recipes and whatnot as well as costing. And in doing so, you're going to be able to use this and utilize it to where you can change your recipes to meet whatever amount or quantity you really need. So Book of Yields is always important for it. You can see all of these ingredients are ones that we're going to be using in our cookie recipe. And these are common and they will be used for whatever recipe you have in the future as well. Next slide, please. So we're going to do some math together. Don't worry, it's not as scary as you think. But we're going to take the three main ingredients from our cookie recipe and we're going to convert them them from volume to weight. So let's start with granulated sugar. Oh, sorry, next slide, please. So let's break it down with math. It's actually really simple when you think about it because we already know one piece of information, which is one cup equal one cup of sugar equals 198 grams. So in this case, we need three-fourths cup. Three-fourths cup, whenever you're moving from fractions to decimals, is going to be 0.75. So we're going to do 0.75 of cup times 198 grams. And then we get to 148, um, which we can round with just because we're doing a smaller production. Now, if you go to larger production, you want to keep that decimal because it makes the world of a difference. So we'll go over to our next slide. And that is going to be our all-purpose flour. And I mentioned that it's all-purpose flour as well because we have all kinds of different types of flours, and those also have different types of weight. So with our all-purpose flour, we need two and three-fourths cups. So just like before, we're going to go from fractions to decimals. We're going to use that and multiply 125 grams because that's what one cup of 
flower is, and it's 343.75. Like I said, you'll be able to round up in this case, but you want to keep that 0.75 if we're going into mass production, because if we were rounded down, it would make about 30 grams worth of difference in our recipe. Next slide, please. Now this one's a little bit trickier. This is going to be our unsalted butter. And because it's in sticks of unsalted butter, we first have to see how much one stick of butter is in grams. So with that, we're just gonna take the two sticks that we need, which is 226 grams, divide by two for 113 grams per stick. And then we're just gonna do 2.25. It's really easy because we've broken it down because we get that quarter as well. Then we're gonna times it by 113 and get 254.25 grams. Next slide, please. So here's our original recipe converted. Look at that, it's so much easier. We went from teaspoons, measuring spoons, all types of different things that we had to get together to now just having to have a scale. And that really does help when you need to be efficient. And honestly, whenever you're doing your fundamentals, you've only got a certain amount of time for production. So you wanna make the most of it. Next slide, please. And then again, we have it where it's so easy if you're doing mass production. We don't have to worry about all of those cups of flour that we would have to scale all everything or uh, scoop, everything just goes down to looking at the number, doing it with your scale, measuring, and once you hit that number, you're good to go. Next slide, please. So if you'd like to take a picture of this, this is our recipe, our ingredients being converted from volume to weight to mass production. So this is a good example of how this can go, but like I said, if you have any other recipes that you want to convert, it's great to keep them in your books because you can always use them and you can make them to whatever quantity you need. So let's get started today on our demonstration. Like I said, we're going to be doing cookie dough today. Or sorry, not cookie dough, cookies. And with our cookies, we are going to be using the creaming method. And again, this goes back into fundamentals of yes, we're doing cookies, which I'm sure every student who's interested in making a pastry has made a batch of cookies before, but we're actually going to be showing Again, the mindset. So not just how to do something, but why we're doing it as well. So to start off, oh, sorry, before I forget, you wanna make sure you have all of your ingredients ready and you're good to go. So we're gonna get started by actually scaling our flour because I wanna show you the process and how easy it is when it comes to scaling versus whenever we're measuring by volume. So I've got my scale. As a baking and pastry student, you're going to get a scale with you in your knife kit. And it's great to keep on hand. Make sure that you check the batteries too. I can tell you from experience that when you don't have your batteries, it definitely sucks. But it's great. We've got teared out, ready to go. So it's at zero grams. We've got our bowl. I've got a small amount of flour. So like I said, we just need 430 else so you can see better. I want to make sure that I'm keeping as little mess as possible. I'm a little bit over, so I'm just gonna pull it out. I'm perfect. So it's so easy. And also if I scale too much or if I lose count of cups, I have to start all over again. Now I can just pour it out and start over. So here, I've also got my sifter ready to go. And you wanna make sure that you sift your flour because it definitely makes for a better product. Because you can see we've got some clumps. We have a lot of moisture in our flour. So, I'm just going to sift it, give it a nice tap. I want to make as little mess as possible. So I'm using my hand rather than shaking it all over the place. Perfect. I'm going to piece over here. I'm going to wash my hands really quickly because I want to make sure I have clean hands for my station. And honestly, having a clean station, clean hands, clean uh, uniform, everything, it's very important because it's going to make for a better product. So, like I said, we've done our scaling. Everything is ready to go. And we are going to get started. So, with the creaming method, it's very important because we're gonna start off with making sure that we have a emulsion and we have a homogenous uh, product. So for example, I've got my sugar, my granulated sugar and my brown sugar, as well as my butter. The key with the butter is you wanna make sure that it's unsalted so that way we can control the amount of salt that goes in, but also that it's at room temperature. 
So to make sure that our um, sugar and our butter become fully emuls or emulsified, we need them to be at the right temperature so that way it becomes a whole product. So I'm gonna throw on my mixer. And you wanna make sure that you're gonna use your paddle attachment. You don't wanna use the whisk attachment, otherwise you're gonna to have too much air in your product. So you can see they look like completely different ingredients, but once we get that going, it's not gonna take very long, but once we get it going, it's gonna fully combine. So you can see it's already starting to combine as well. I'm gonna slowly build my speed. I don't wanna shock it all at once. You can see it's also getting lighter in color. The key is that you wanna make sure that enough air is getting into the cream or into the butter and the sugar that it's fully combined. If you don't have a mixer, you can definitely do this by hand. I've learned from experience, but I always recommend with a mixer so that way it becomes fully uh, combined. Alrighty, we are just about there. You can see even after just about a minute, it's become much lighter in color, it's fluffier. So now I'm going to take it off my mixer because the key is that you want to go in between each step with mixing and making sure that it's fully combined. So I'm going to use my paddle attachment. I'm going to use my rubber spatula. And you want to make sure you get all of the products off the paddle because you want to make sure that you mix entirely. So I'm going to hold this here. I love KitchenAid bowls that have a handle because you really want to get as much control over it as possible. And you can see we've got it on the sides. But there was a little bit of butter that hung to the side. So we wanted to make sure to give it a good scrape and have it fully combined. I'm gonna hold this here and now I'm gonna put it back on my mixer. And you don't want to go for too long when you're doing the first mixing of your butter and sugar because if you go for too long it's going to become very light very airy but also it's not going to be stable enough to hold all of your other ingredients so as i go this is around, i'm going to pour in my one egg as well as my vanilla also, you want to make sure that you keep these separate until these two ingredients, your vanilla and egg, separate until you're ready to mix because the vanilla will actually cook your egg. And it's dehydrated, so you're not going to have the same weight that you did whenever you started scaling. So, it's going to the other. It seems a little bit loose, but that's fine because we're going to add in our other ingredients that are going to stabilize it. Perfect. All righty. Now again, I'm gonna take it off the mixer. I know it seems silly to do this extra step, but I did have a chef once tell me, and it stuck with me forever, this advice. And it was, don't listen to your lazy voice. So if you have this moment where you're like, you know what, I don't need to worry about it, it's not gonna fall. Yes, it will fall. Or, oh, I don't need to mix it, it's fully combined. No, it's not. Like, always make sure that you go through that extra step because you're gonna pay for it uh, with a better product. And if you have to remix it or remake something, you're gonna think, you know, I should have done that step. So it definitely helps. So again, we're mixing it, making sure it's fully combined. Nice. And I always make sure to use my rubber spatula, press it down because I don't want to waste any of my products. I don't want to lose anything because it's also going to change the ratio that we have whenever we're making our cookies. So if I'm losing some of my product because I haven't scraped with my rubber spatula, then it's going to change our cookies. So, throw this back on the mixer. Now we're gonna add in our dry ingredients. So, I'm gonna slowly mix. I'm gonna add in my salt. As well as my baking soda and baking powder. I uh, sifted these as well because you don't wanna have a clump of baking soda inside your cookie. Perfect. And those are going to help the cookies rise. It's going to help them have this very um, cold or stick hold on it and maintain their shape. Now we're getting towards our main, and that is our flour. 
I learned this trick in fundamentals and I absolutely will use it for everything now. So all that parchment that we have at the bottom, when you fold it beforehand, you can use that when you're pouring it into your bowl. And it's a simple tool, but it definitely helps whenever you're going through because honestly, putting something in a bowl into another bowl makes it a little bit more difficult in your uh, mixing. So, I'm going to follow to that. And I'm going to add in about a third of my flour right now. And that's another reason that this is such a great tip is because I can hold it, I can combine it, and then I can stop whenever I want. So, I'm going to have it mixed. Nice. And then I'm going to put it back on a low speed. And I'm going to do another combination, or another addition of flour. Awesome. And the reason that you have what's called cookie dough instead of like cookie batter is really the amount of liquid to um, dry ingredients. So with our combination, I know it seems like we have a lot of flour, but it's because of that that we're able to close the cookie dough. So it's all about maintaining its shape and the amount of certain types of ingredients. So we're just about there. I'm going to do one more additional more flour. And then I'm going to come off to the side. I'm going to make sure that I set my station up for whenever I'm about to use quickly. And you can see that this is a more fully combined product. So chop with sickness, just like you would any other cookie down here. And now we are about to add my favorite ingredient, which is our chocolate chips. Now, if you want to add in any types of, um, you know, fruits, nuts, other types of chocolates, anything like that, you can use that, but use this as a base for your cookie dough recipe. I'm going to slowly add in my chocolate chips. Nice. And in my book, you can never have too many chocolate chips. Now we're going to take off our cookie dough. It's got a great consistency right now. So it's got that hold. Feel the weight of it. So what I'm gonna do is one more mix with my rubber spatula because oftentimes when you add that flour, a lot of your liquid ingredients will go to the bottom. So we wanna make sure again, it's fully combined. Alrighty, first off, take a screenshot of that. Does that not look amazing? I used to love making cookies at home just because honestly, my Nana would always let me flip a spoon. But there's even a demo where you can do edible cookie dough so you don't have any um, of your uh, health hazards or anything, so be sure to check that one out. So I'm fully combining my cookie dough. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna take it, and I actually wanted to do mini cookies today. So I've got my little scoop, but you can make them any type of size or um, shape that you want. And one thing I did learn in class is you don't want to change the shape of your cookie. Some people roll them up into a perfect circle, but it's really having that rustic, genuine look of it that makes it a better product. Because people know that it's homemade. So I'm doing my mini cookies. I'm only going to do about six for this demo, but I promise this cookie dough will not go to waste. And you want to make sure to do the shingle whenever you're baking cookies, where you've got your different products, but you've got them in between each other. Because when they spread, they're going to connect to each other and they're not going to have that perfect cookie shape that we're looking for. So I'm going to do one more. Nice. And then I'm going to throw these in the oven at 350 degrees. The time can vary depending on, for example, the size of the cookies that you're making. But it's usually going to be between 8 and 12 minutes. So throw these in the oven. And now we're gonna use the power of TV and I'm gonna show you these amazing fresh baked cookies that we've got to enjoy.